Hi, Kenny. It's great to have you on here. We're super excited to get to speaking to you. Um, as you know, Fizzle is a platform to help musicians. It is subscription based and it is just a new thing to put out there for musicians. Um, but yeah, do you want to just introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you when you first started doing music. What what it is you do? Okay, so uh, my name is Kenny Stout. Um, my artist name is KS. I'm a recording artist, uh, A&R, producer, songwriter, um, beat producer. I do a little bit of everything, uh, but mainly I'm a recording artist. I've been oh. doing music for about 10 years and uh, five years, really taking, taking, taking it seriously for about five years. So, Yeah, oh, fair enough. What kind of genre of music do you have? Um, I do a lot of pop music. Um, I spread out a little bit between like pop, hop, and like pop dance, um, but I do dabble in just about every genre. Yeah, is there any that like you really don't like that you don't go towards at all? Um, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of like you know, you know, screamo metal, but um, yeah. other than that, uh, I pretty much like everything. Yeah, I can't, I kind of thought that that would be the ones that you would say though. Because <laughs> obviously if you are into like your dancing R and B, it's very different to then go to like the heavy metal side of things. Uh, yeah. I personally like a good mix. Like I was always into my heavy metal when I was younger and then as I've got older I've enjoyed like pop a little bit more and it is quite good mm -hmm. hearing all the different kind of songs that are coming out. Um especially, you know, when you get like the collaborations and the mixing them together, I really enjoy them. I think they're great. Oh yeah. Don't get me don't get me wrong. I do like some, you know, like Metallica, Nirvana, yeah. but none of that like the heavy hardcore screamo. I just like I can't. Yeah. Oh, that's good anyway. Um. So far, so obviously you said you've been doing it like ten years, well, all your life, and then within the last five years, a bit more seriously and stuff. So, what's been your proudest accomplishment from when you've been going throughout your life, like with music? Um. I would have, I don't know, I have a couple different ones. Um, I, I now have major distribution um, through Intercept, which is uh, In Grooves and Universal Music. Um, and then I've done like some tour stuff, which is really cool. That's cool. And other than that, I would probably say um, I just started doing some major collaborations with people that are like, working with some really, really big people in the industry. So I'd, I'd have to say probably those three things. Yeah. Where have you taught? Is it just locally or? Um, I've gone up and down the East Coast, out to the Midwest. Um, we were doing uh, cheerleading facilities and competitions for like the youth athletes. So we go out to their gyms, but we go out to their competitions and perform. And that was a lot of fun. Oh, um, we tried to do something very unique. Yeah. Um, something that a lot of people weren't doing. So it was it was a good time. Yeah, that sounds well good. Um what inspires you as an artist? Like what is it that makes you come up with the ideas? What is it that just like I know that <clears throat> when we're out like in nature, that's when we come up with like our best ideas. Um so what is it for you that inspires you to produce and record your stuff? Um I don't know. I've just I've always been a really big fan of pop music, and especially the two thousands. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, two thousands was so good. There was there were so many different genres that were big, and I just feel like um, I like music nowadays. Um, I just I don't know. I I just I really enjoy all the different ideas that everybody has and the different concepts that they're coming up with in music yeah so I just feel like with all the different personalities and everything now like you know pop used to just sound one way and now like there's a lot of different ways you know there's lots of you know pop hop and pop hip-hop pop mm -hmm. dance and like pop country like you know back 20 years ago people were like except for taylor swift when taylor swift started like you know breaking stuff out 10 years ago yeah. it wasn't really like pop country now there's just just pop is everywhere so yeah so there is a lot of variety and stuff are you, you excited about putting your like stamp out there and being like this is who i am this is what i'm doing yes yes i'm very excited that sounds really good so um 
one of the other questions that I wanted to ask you about because I don't know the answer to this anyway from you. Um, are you an independent artist who goes out and does your own stuff, or are you signed to a label? Because you did mention Universal earlier, so I don't know if you still have something with them or what's your situation. Okay, so I am signed to MTP Records. I'm actually wearing one of the sweatshirts. Um, we are a small label, um, independent, so we just have distribution through Intercept and and, and Universal. Um, you know, we're completely our own entity and everything like that. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, one day we'll either, you know, join with them or something, but for now, um, we just, uh, our label is, we're working hard and, you know, we're always looking for new innovative music. So yeah. we're, ex we're excited. Is there quite a few of you working on that then? Um, we have a small little team. Um, we do work well together and, uh, you know, we're always looking for more either interns or artists or anybody who's looking to collaborate with, uh, with a label and, uh, yeah. Yeah. That sounds like really interesting. It is something that we might maybe even discuss with you as well. Cause obviously our business is about getting musicians on board. Um, and we want to be able to find opportunities so that we can send them out to places and we can be like, well, we've got this connection, so let's join up with them. And, you know, just the, the whole, it's the networking part of it, isn't it? And just getting to know who you can for the benefit yeah. of other people. So that's, like, why we would, like, message someone like yourself. Um. So, yeah, Um. what I was going to say. Oh, what do you think are the pros and cons of uh, either being independent or being signed to a label? Do you think there's any major ones? Do you think one balance is better than the other one? Okay, so um, for for major labels, I'm not really too sure because I haven't really worked with any yet or any or have gotten a chance to speak to somebody who's been signed to one yet about you know the differences, but um. For anybody who is an independent artist, I would 100% say that some sort of label is the best option. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, labels, this, that, the other. But you also have to remember, too, you, you have to make sure you're getting the best beneficial deal that's good for you. Yeah. Um, as, an as an independent artist, there's a lot of fees and a lot of people don't understand the cost of what it takes to really make an artist, you know, yeah. not even break through just to be a, um, an artist that's living off their music. You know, um, I do music full time and the cost that, that between, you know, making an album and trying to tour yeah. and merge and all these things. And I'm like, wow, you know, four or five years ago, I had no idea that things cost this much money. So I can only imagine what it costs on the next level. And a lot of uh, independent artists just want a label to just give them money when they're not making money in return. You know, I try to tell people all the time, as a lot of independent artists know that a label's a bank. If you go to the bank and you ask for a quarter million or half a million dollars and your credit score is like a 400, the bank's not going to give you, they're not going to give you any yeah. sort of loan. So you want a label to give you a quarter million dollars when your music makes $50 a month, you know, like you have to have your brand's got to be moving. You know, you have to be doing the right things and your brand has to be making money. If your brand is making five or $10,000 a month, well, of course a label would want to put in $500,000 because you need that much more to get to the next level and they can take it on tenfold. But um, as your brand starts growing, you know, independent artists have to build their team, try and get um, not even a manager, get a, someone that can help with social media, someone that can help you, you know, with your photography, your videography, anybody that you can bring on your team to help your imaging and your branding get better. That will help you get to the next step and meet better connections is the way to go. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, a lot of people, when they are thinking about labels, it seems to be about the percentage that they take, which people have to con about. But obviously, it opens up doors for you as well. So there is, like, that's obviously a benefit that, um, like, I was just speaking to somebody else and they were saying about um, signing with a label and how if you've got that on your, like, social medias and you say, well, I'm working with these people, it opens up more doors so you can then contact someone else and then more collaborations can happen. But I do feel mm -hmm. like independent as well, I, I feel like they're, they're kind of let down a bit with, 
I, I feel like some just think that they can make money overnight with music and it's just not physically possible. That isn't what's going to happen. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be constantly working on it. And as you said, it does cost a lot of money and people need to consider that going into it. Um, obviously, in times now, social media is like one of the main things and you need to try and crack social media to be able to get most places. That's how I feel anyway. There's a lot of social proof with people. So if there's people making music, but they're not on social media, they're going to massively struggle. It's a very, um, it's really about being very strategic and knowing your analytics, you know, um, if, if, if you know that you live in New York city and your following is in like, um, I don't know, Tennessee, you know, you have to get out to Tennessee and perform in Tennessee or push for Tennessee and find the places that, you know, are really following you to help you succeed. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't think about the little things like that. They just see, well, I need to make music and I need to get it here. And, you know, these, these major artists have teams of people who are thinking about when a release needs to drop, you know, which, which you know, the demographics, there's all these things that are included that make a big difference in what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, I think it is a case of having the right people around you and supporting you and even it doesn't really matter where you are in your career because you're always going to need that as you said you're doing it full-time now so how is that going for you how are you finding it are you finding any great difficulties or is it but obviously I imagine that there will be some downfalls because in business they genuinely is like now and again uh some setbacks and stuff but tell me a little bit about how it is going for you and just how you feel on the situation so um, things are going well. Um, you know, as I said before, uh, we're starting to work with some um, people who have major credits, um, people, you know, like who have stuff on like Disney and things like that that are producing some of my stuff. Um, I just did a, um, a collaboration with the great female artist Rivka and uh, the producer's Velvet Cash. She's got a new album coming out next year. I can't really say too much about it, but there's going to yeah. be a lot of major players on it. So he's like really about to blow up. Um, but being full-time in music is is great you know finally being able to be like you know I'm doing it and um you know what music's making uh enough money to be able to be like hey you know we can do these things um the hardest part I would say in in what in being a um, full-time musician is a lot of people struggle with you know I have a full-time job and I want to be full-time music. So until you can make enough where you don't have to work full-time is the hardest part. So um, I would suggest anybody who's really, really trying to be a musician, especially if you're younger, you have to try and find a job that is either A, okay with you being able to take off certain you know times when you need you to perform or do things, or and B, um, you know, you, you can't really get into a field where you can't take off. You know, you have to find some sort of other kind of job, like, I don't know, working at like a Coles or a car wash or something where like you can find time to be able to take off and it's okay with them. So you can help manage your schedule so that as your music starts to, you know, go in this direction, you can not work full time and go down to maybe 35 hours a week or 30 hours a week and kind of compensate. So this way you don't get fired and um, you have more opportunities. Yeah. See, that's something that I feel like in, let's say, normal jobs, um, a lot of people don't want them as much anymore. So I think companies are becoming a bit more flexible because of realising that they, it's just all changing, isn't it? So, like, it's going from people wanting nine to fives to wanting to be able to do what they actually like and what they have passion in. I do think yeah. COVID had a lot to do with that as well because people realised, right, my job's not technically stable. Um, I need to do something for myself. And then obviously, because we were separated from so many people, I feel like a lot of people wanted to make sure they had more time with the family afterwards. Um, so it is a, a changing thing completely. And I do, well, hopefully a lot more of the nine to five type jobs do become a, a lot more flexible and stuff I think it would be great because I think we all have the right to follow our passion as well as like being able to earn while we do it and we shouldn't be penalized for 
keeping on a job while we were doing something else on the side we can't feel like that's what we have to do and we have to stick with it and you're not allowed to do anything else um do, is that something you did did you were you working full-time and then you've like switched it round and then was that like a hard process for you or did you find it quite easy <laughs> um honestly um I was doing a, a lot of coaching uh, I was coaching like cheerleading and um I was into a lot of athletics when I was younger and um I literally just um was coaching basically full-time and then um our studio is up in Philly, so um, I'm in South Carolina, so we drive up and down a lot. And it got to the point, especially in COVID, where it was like, you know, we were kind of shut down. Music could still go, and we had to find another way. So we literally went on tour during COVID. It was the funniest thing. You know, people are looking at us like, you're crazy, you know? And, yeah. and um yeah, during COVID, you could still have small gatherings of people. So we made sure that we strategically went out and we were like, well, we can hold, you know, this many people, this many feet apart in an open parking lot and this, that, the other. So we, 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 if there's a will, there's a way, you know, so we yeah. found a way and we were the only people who were out there doing shows of like, you know, 20 people or 15 people here, or there, you know, like yeah. we just set up enough shows that, we started to get like noticed and we started to, you know, and it kind of really helped take off to the next level by doing something that most people weren't doing. Yeah. And, um, and that just kind of helped during COVID with work. And then as we started to come off of COVID, um, you know, I still was in the gym and, and doing stuff. And even now, you know, like when I'm around and I'm like, you know, certain days, like I was there yesterday helping out and doing some stuff, you know, because I still love it. But, um, yeah, people just have to either find um, a passion that they can do besides for their main goal and, you know, kind of try and pursue it. So this way it also helps offset costs and things like that. But as long as you're willing to do it and try anything, you can make it happen. Yeah, I totally agree. I think if um, if you can dream it, you can do it you can get there it, it's completely possible people have done it they've been from the very start um obviously with fizzle we're trying to speak to as many people as possible because we want to know how we can help out musicians um because like i said about collaborating with certain people and stuff um but also we feel we wanted to aim at music because we feel no matter what the way you feel if you're sad if you're happy like any environment there's always music that kind of speaks to you about it like and I think I love that idea that music is just it does everything for you do you know what I mean do you understand that <clears throat> yeah yeah it's definitely like, you great have to use them, like, fling something on and then if you're feeling a bit sad you can have a cry to it and stuff so I think it's great and obviously all the different genres um it's just such a variety of stuff that I think is amazing Oh yeah, I love music, and you know, I I hope everybody can succeed in in anything that they're doing, even if it's not music. Um, you know, just you got to push for it, you got to go for it, you can't give up. And as frustrating as it gets sometimes, because you feel like you're overworking and you know things aren't going anywhere, you just you have to keep grinding, and you, and you just have to find a way, you know ask questions, you know, Google, take a class if you need to, ask somebody who's doing it. You can you can always do anything that you believe and that you dream and you can make you can you can succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Um with like within the music industry, if is this something that you would personally change to improve it? Um as for musicians or listeners, is there like anything you could think of that you would would improve the industry yes actually um so one thing that i feel like we really need or we should have is um with i guess with major labels you know like a lot of people try to find labels a lot of people try to find this at the other i feel like of labels should kind of have like a minimum requirement that artists know. So like if I was trying to go to, I don't know, um, Columbia Records uh, and Sony and 
I could go on their page and it says, you know, you need to have a minimum of this many followers and need to be doing this many shows, selling this many tickets to be even, you know, considered an artist yeah. and things like that. It would make it easier for artists, you know, or um, just even having people that are telling, you know, the the real story about how to, you know, not the real story, um, giving real information on how to grow as an artist. Yeah. Um, Cause I go on TikTok and I hear people go, everybody wants to be um, an, uh, a music consultant. You know, everybody's like, this is how you should, you know, share your music and this is how you should go on social media. But that's not helping an artist. Yeah. You know, you're not talking about the real you know, pieces of branding and imaging and how often you're supposed to be putting out your music. Like, you know, everyone's like, you should be dropping a song a month. You should not be dropping a song a month. It takes us a month to be able to actually market a song to put it out. Yeah. You know, so like, there's so much bad information going around. Um, and the one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is as an artist, you know, it's great to be connecting and doing music with people that are the same level as you, but you should really be shooting for the person at the next level to collaborate with them yeah. and putting out a real collaboration with a real contract, getting real royalties and, and doing it as a legit business, not just collaborating to just collaborate because what is collaborating with somebody at the same level as you if you're only getting... 500 or a thousand streams a month like that that doesn't do anything for you oh you want to you want credibility you want to be doing something with people who have done something which can help your name and your brand get bigger yeah absolutely so you feel that that's kind of what's lacking within the music industry is someone to really give good information out there and not just be like post this now post that and that kind of yeah thing. We need that and a lot of people, the ones that really know, they just, they, they cost too much money to, to talk to, you know? Oh, yeah. And everybody else just kind of says what everyone else is saying and I feel that's why, you know, the, the indie music is completely over flooding the market and everyone's frustrated on why they're not growing. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything stagnant in my career, you know, we keep going up and my team is you know, we've never been in the music industry besides for, you know, when we started all together. So. Yeah. Well, it's been a big learning process for you all then. Yeah. Very, very, very big learning process. Yeah. Well, I think that's great advice. Um, it's something that we can try and implement within like Fizzle Brand. Um, obviously we was helping musicians and stuff. We, it does work for other things, but we mainly just want to help musicians. Um, we feel like the payment methods that people can use at the moment are quite difficult for people to start earning. I don't know if you agree with that, but like with streamings, I think you get like, I heard that you get like 0 0.04 pence on some sites, depending on who you are. It can go up a little bit, but um, do you, not to pry into like your money or anything, but do you earn decent money back from all the streaming sites that you're on, or do you feel like it's a bit difficult and you'd be able, you'd want to earn more? Um, so most streaming sites, I think the average is point zero 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 three. Um, it really depends on um if the person's streaming from a premium account or a regular account, like that makes a difference. Um with our dashboard with Intercept, which is really cool, um, you can see where the where the person is streaming at, uh, at like what time they streamed it. If they're using a premium service, if they're just you know not if they're not using a premium or ad supported service, um, so that's really cool. Um, but I feel like artists definitely should be getting paid a little bit more than point zero zero three cents a stream. Yeah. Um. Especially since there's a lot of music going up, you know, it's not like the same as 20 years ago where it was like, you know, there was so many artists and, you know, payouts and things like that. But, um, yeah, I, I think it should be a little more, even if it was doubled, I think that would be, if it was doubled, it would be about right. Um, I normally stream anywhere from like, 
19 or 20,000 to about 30 or 40,000 a month. It all depends on the month. Yeah. Um, and it's still like nothing. You know, if you're not streaming a hundred thousand dollars a month, you really can't do much with your, with your music. Yeah. Um, especially because at, at the level that I'm at, you know, if I wanted to get some sort of real, real radio campaign, like on a major FM station, I would need to be streaming, you know, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars a month just to get a small campaign and ad supported thing. Yeah. So for an artist to really do any sort of damage or to come up in the industry, you definitely need to be in tens of thousands of streams a month for for it to be noticeable. And then you need to, you know, hundreds of thousands is where the where the mark starts, you know, where yeah. where the labels can see what you're really doing, especially if you're already under their um distribution. Yeah. Um, so obviously, as you're saying, like streaming, you don't get much unless you have loads. This is why we've kind of created Fizzle as well, because what we do is like a subscription platform. So say if you sell okay, on it and then you made a profile, but you made it £5 a month or £10 a month. If you was getting just like 500 people on there, that's a, a rolling income of like 5000 My maths isn't very good. Um but like we pay 85%, which is obviously a lot higher than a lot of other sites and stuff pay out. Um, is there any advice that you would give to us personally um, to help the music industry? Yeah, yeah, that's, wow, 85%. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Well, we found out that most labels pay about 20%, 30%. Um, and obviously we take a 15% cut and that's purely just to hold the website. We want to be able to help as many people as possible. Um, we tend to base it usually like, so say if you have like, I think I just said this, but anyway, if we have like 5,000 followers on say YouTube and then you just got 500 people over for like 10 pound a month, then the conversion rate for that is just, it's insane how much and how fast it can go. Um, so yeah, just any advice that you'd have for us, we're willing to listen to it. Okay, yeah. That's great. <laughs> um so there's there's one other thing I think um a, a lot of indies are 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 uh missing or I would say even just the industry. I don't know if this is something that um that you have also noticed, but um I see a lot of people that they don't really go out and they don't perform and they're kind of stuck on TikTok. Um, and I feel like, you know, if you're really trying to make a mark in the industry and you're really trying to go out and, and make money, that that's something that you have to do. You have to actually get out and engage with fans and travel around because if you can't do those things. Like, why does somebody want to sit there and, you know, watch you just on the computer? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do think it's great. Like, I do think uh, the more conversations you have, the more people meet, the more doors will open for you. So definitely is people should be getting out there and trying to perform. Um, I know I love going to gigs. Um, it's completely different when people are playing live in front of you rather than just scrolling through, like, Facebook or whatever. It's just such a different atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So obviously we spoke all about music and everything like that, but do you have any like interests or hobbies outside of music that's completely different just to get a little insight on who you are as a person? Um hobbies. I mean, I've I've started doing a little bit of like video editing stuff, um, just kind of like messing around with it. Um other than music. I don't know. Music is like my life. I love music so much. Um, I mean, I do like working out. I like, you know, watching movies, TV, stuff like that. Um, I like going to the beach. The beach is also fun. Yeah. Um, and I don't just, I like sports. I haven't had a time to, I haven't had a lot of time to play any um, in a while, but um, I was thinking about getting back into snowboarding. Oh, um, I haven't fun. done that in about, oh man probably about 15 years yeah <laughs> so um 
it would it would be it'd be great to do some snowboarding again but um right now i'm just i'm super focused on on my career because i have a lot of huge things coming up um mm -hmm. between the rest of this year and next year so my goal i'm like i can't mess up you know like i don't i gotta stay focused and once yeah, i make it you know, like, focus on just yeah Oh, it sounds great, honestly. Um, well, I just want to thank you for coming on and chatting with me today and um, giving us a bit of insight about you, your feelings on the music industry, and hopefully how Fizzle can um, improve to help any musicians out. Um, I'd love to speak to you more about possibly something with your business, with ours, uh, just so that we can help out other musicians as well. Um, and I will post a link below for your website or your socials. Just let me know which ones you want. But yeah, thank you so much for coming chatting with me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. And um, everybody that, you know, winds up watching this or sharing this, um, like I said, no matter if you're in music or whatever you're in, your dreams can happen. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Find a way because you can succeed. And thanks for having me.